Okay, well, so far, <laughs> that's, due to, that's due to Alpine Cat, and if you, LA, if you Google something like LHC rap or Alpine Cat with a K, uh, you can see the rest of it, which is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to see it here. Uh, but that part I showed you is actually quite accurate and informative. Uh, good. Now, <laughs> I've discussed what the LHC is, both as a physical object and as a purposeful object. Now I'd like to share with you what I think it's going to be able uh, not enable us to access my vision for what could happen there and why it will be a great step in our understanding of nature if I'm right. Otherwise, it'll be some other great step. No. <laughs> this is a dodecahedron, which is a regular figure. It has 12 sides. You can make a calendar from it. The sides are all the same. They're all uh, regular pentagons with all equal sides. There are many ways you can rotate this figure and change one side into another without changing its overall shape. We say that this is a figure that has very high symmetry because of that. You can make changes that don't make a difference to the overall shape. One thing we've learned in the 20th century is that nature really seems to love symmetry and we use that as a guiding principle in guessing new laws. Now, if you, were shape, if you were presented with this thing, hmm, you wouldn't have too difficult a time probably figuring out what it is. It's meant to be a dodecahedron. You just fold it up. Mm -hmm. But suppose you had this, and you didn't know about calendars. <laughs> well, then it gets much more challenging. But if you, because it's missing pieces, but if you knew about symmetry and knew that there were only a few possibilities for regular solids, uh, you might guess that this was meant to be a dodecahedron. It's just missing some pieces because somebody's erased bits. And that's why it's lopsided in the particular way it is. It has these slots and so on. <laughs> With that in mind, <laughs> This is the standard model of elementary particle physics. Which does it look like? It looks not like that perfect dodecahedron. It looks like that messy, bitty, distorted thing. Uh, almost everything we know about the physical world is summarized more or less honestly <laughs> in this uh, sheet, if you know how to unpack it. There are SU3 cross SU2 cross U1 are the symmetries of the different interactions, strong, weak, and electromagnetic. Uh, the different kinds of quarks with different colors are transformed into each other in horizontal transformations. The different kinds of weak interactions make vertical trans translations. Electromagnetism acts according to the strength indicated in these funny numbers here. It's all, I won't go through the technical details, but it's all there. And if you uh, learn some relativistic quantum field theory and group theory, you could unpack this without further, further information and reconstruct most of what we know about the physical world. But it's not as beautiful as it could be. It's, as I mentioned before, there are three different kinds of interactions here. Gravity is left out altogether, by the way. Just, we'll come back to it later and five, six different kinds of matter that aren't related to each other. So, not as beautiful as it could be. Can we do better? Can we do what we did for the dodecahedron? Supply, guess some missing pieces so that it makes a more beautiful pattern and also makes sense of why it's lopsided in the particular way it is when we see only part of it. And the answer is, Absolutely. If you imagine a higher, s you can work through the mathematics of symmetry very systematically, just as you can classify the possible regular solids very systematically. 
And one of the simplest possible patterns that extends the partial patterns the, that we see in the standard model or core theory is this thing called SO10. It represents rotations in an imaginary ten-dimensional space, but never mind. <laughs> it's, uh, and all the particles that I showed you that were scattered before now fit together. Everything clicks. If you didn't know the names of these particles or these properties that have been painfully constructed over decades and really centuries of experimental work, just knowing these things, which are their various color, weak, and, and uh, other charges, you could reconstruct their properties. It's a fantastic mapping between ideal, beautiful mathematics and physical reality. Even those funny numbers that hung by the side that described the, char the electric charges, uh, which were previously unrelated to the color and weak charges, uh, are now in the same structure. And instead of three different interactions, we just have one. So it's really grand. Until you try to confront it with experiment, the first prediction of this idea is that if all those three different interactions are really manifestations of the same underlying interaction, they should have the same power, the same strength. But they don't. Oops. Mm -hmm. If we look at the actual strengths, there's a reason the strong interaction is called strong. It's the strongest, so if I plot things from weak to strong, it's peers on the bottom. They're not all equal. This is what, what you see for their power as they act fundamentally at short distances. So that looks bad. Another beautiful idea destroyed by ugly reality. <laughs> Until we remember this. That when we look at these particles and look at the interactions between them, we're not seeing them in their pristine form. We're seeing them through a distorting medium that can change the interactions, just as when you view thing un something underwater, it can look like it has a different shape than it really does. Empty space is the medium that has properties, that has all these fluctuations that can distort our vision. Fortunately, we know how to correct for that. Our equations tell us how to take into account these distortions. And so we can, with the stroke of a pen, make the corrections, go down to very much shorter distances, and see if, in fact, the different interactions have the same underlying strength fundamentally. So let's do that. We start with the strong interaction. And when we go to very much higher energies or shorter distances, we find that the inverse strength uh, grows, which means that the, the actual strength goes down. And uh, why did I plot it this way? Well, because I'm annoying. No, it's, be <laughs> it's because if you plot it in this particular way, it, it looks like a straight line. If you put a log on this, it's technical. If I put a log on this side, an inverse on that side, it looks like a nice straight line. <coughs> That's all. I could plot it in other ways, and it would look more impressive with curly cues and so forth. But I like to make the, the crooked straight. <coughs> OK, so that's interesting. We want to see if things unify, so we need at least two lines to see if they cross. Yeah, they do. When we put the weak interactions and do the same through the same corrections, we find that indeed they can be manifestations of one underlying interaction that has been distorted in its vision from what it's really like at short distances to uh, its. Uh, a different appearance at 
where we actually measure them. But you may not find this too impressive because two lines do tend to meet in a point. So to make a really, I mean a lot of things could have gone wrong. The lines could have diverged in opposite directions or they could have met very soon in which case uh, experiments would already rule, have ruled it out or they could have met on the other side. But still, two lines do tend to meet in a point, so this is an impressive, as impressive as it could be. Fortunately, we have a third interaction, and so we can see if it also comes in line. And here it comes. Don't! <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost, but not quite. Now, if we were followers of the famous philosopher Karl Popper, we could be very pleased at this point. Karl Popper told us that the goal of science was to produce falsifiable theories. And here <laughs> we produced a theory that's not only falsifiable, but actually false. <laughs> what could be better than that? <laughs> but of course, that's not the way we think. When we have a beautiful idea that seems to almost work, we try to way find ways of truthifying it. 